Well, good afternoon all. Um, thank you for the invitation to join you today. I'm just sorry I'm not there in person, partly because I'll enjoy all your company and your wonderful place you live in. Also, I wouldn't have to talk into this funny little camera. I'd like to start by acknowledging that I'm speaking from Manang Noongar country in southwestern Australia. Uh, show my respect for elders past, present, and my determination to help all those emerging. And say with some pride that we work across Wadandi, Bibbulmun, Goreng, Manang, Willimun, Dalarak, all Noongar um, communities, plus Naju and increasingly Murning. Um, First Nations groups from the West Coast to the border now, a lot of them didn't exist for 5, 10, certainly 15 years ago. Some historic changes are underway over here, and we're now adding ecological change to that list. My task is to talk to you about landscape restoration and scale. All I can do is share some of our experiences in this part of the world with the Gondwana Link program. I hope there's useful points in there. It's a dialogue. I'm still trying to understand what we've done and why it's worked and how to make it work better. So welcome the chance for ongoing dialogue. I want to make this initial point that um, the science is good. Yeah, there's plenty of good science out there we can use. But this is fundamental to how change happens, the warmth, trust and friendship between people and between organisations. And it's how we got going. This young lady, Peg Olson, Nature Conservancy US, came out here in 99 to see if they could help get a few things moving in Australia. We struck up a friendship. We've still got a damn good one. We trust each other. We've had some great times and we've done a lot of plotting. Um, Peg all was also pretty useful in drumming up a quite decent lump of money at the very beginning, which helped draw in some of our colleagues and helped us get over the startup hump. There is a thing called the startup hump. Um, if you're contemplating a program, you think about how you get rolling, because once you're rolling, you can often keep rolling. Rolling momentum brings its own support, but you've got to start. So our, our program is about trying to achieve a thousand kilometres of connected country from the wet forest across the climate gradient to the, the dry inland and the, the living heart of Australia, the bit that hasn't been totally trampled. We pick the southern bit of the state where most of the bush remains, where you are across the climate gradient, where a lot of the biological richness is, a lot of the good groups are, and it's the south. And if it here it is getting hotter and drier, species are moving south. Those that can't swim are going to enjoy the insurance policy we're building for them across Gondwanaly. It's a simple vision. Um, we don't have to change it every three years when we go to election. Our core efforts largely run off private generosity and the goodwill of many good people. Um, really appreciative of that, not just for the dollars, but for the freedom that comes from working with um, non-government money. It's a totally different world. And it's, at the very least, we have a more diverse funding base. Lots of accountability, though. If, if you're going to be friends with all these people and if you're going to take them out there and show them where their private money went and what a difference it made, high accountability, and that's not a bad thing. Who are we? Well, there is a, a not-for-profit company called, called Gondwana Link Limited um, with a small number of us in it and some of the groups as members, but there is a... a a wide array of groups who've, who come, who do bits, who we've helped strengthen the bits they're doing, who all sorts of roles. Some have been with us since inception and, and will forever. Some come and go. Some come for specific purposes. Some don't like us anymore. Some have recently discovered us. It's a moving feast. 
enjoy it. As I said, we keep the, the core pretty small, probably a bit too small. Um, you, you've got to have sustainable workloads, and we haven't. But the bulk of the money has got to hit the ground and got to help strengthen the groups who are working on the ground. Gone Wildlink Limited is not about working on the ground. Um, it's also not about being a gatekeeper or a bottleneck for um, groups to have to work through and check out with each other and can I do that? Yeah, we're, we're interested in what viral spread means. I do want to acknowledge that young lady in the photo, a few young ladies popping up here, Amanda Keesing, who um, has been the, the other half of the core for 18 years and retired three weeks ago. The young fella on her lap, well, he's six foot five now. Um, very quickly, we, we do have a set number of organisational functions for, for Gone Wildling, keeping up the profile, supporting the groups, monitoring and evaluation when we can, gap filling, really important. We're not here to, as an organisation, to do the stuff on the ground that um, needs doing. We, we try and help others do that, but we will step in, fill a gap and try and 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 exit, I guess, and provide the continuity over time. Large landscape is large geographically and large over time. And some things are decades of connection before they happen. We're here to provide ongoing change across the ups and downs of different organisations. It is a mixture of a network, an organisation, and, and I guess a, a movement. Um, and hopefully we're pulling the best from all of them. But it's, um, it's a new way of doing things for some of us. It's not that classic hierarchy that, that many of us have worked in. Ah, yes, well, nothing ever goes to plan, but that's why we, we adapt and change. And that's, that's not a bad summary of, of the last 19 years. We're doing all right. It's been a different journey than we thought. Get used to it. I want to very quickly take you through some of the geography and and the the steps we've taken and, and the achievements over time. There is a place recognised, if not revered now, as the Great Western Woodlands, the largest remaining temperate woodland on Earth. It used to be known as that bit of bush the other side of the wheat belt that we haven't got around to clearing yet. It's a wonderful place. Um, it's incredibly rich and diverse. Mix of land uses, but, you know, a few mines dotted in among 16 million hectares isn't as bad as you might think. Um, and really significant work from our colleagues in the Wilderness Society um, more than a decade ago now to bring together the science, wave the flag for this important place, give it a name and get political acceptance. They did get um, election commitments, some money for government to look after. The joint that was in 2008, two or three years later, not a lot of change. There was a strategy and there's a few dollars spent on the ground and some glossies. But in fact, we were a bit disappointed. No extra areas protected. How do you pivot? Well, We've been talking from the beginning with the Naju people, whose country much of this is, and the federal court helped out. Naju had been fighting in the court for 14, 15 years for their native title rights to be recognised. The court came through. Naju have um, exclusive native title over much of the woodlands. We helped set up Naju Conservation Aboriginal Corporation. We found them some streams of money. For, for infrastructure, for buildings, for vehicles, for a ranger team, um, healthy country plan, local bushfire brigade, all sorts of exciting stuff they now do. We're able to hand it all over in 2017. They're an autonomous operation who just get on and manage an area of land almost as big as Tasmania. In the middle of the link, fragmented it, fragmented agricultural areas, you still have the big bits, the, the Walpole Wilderness Area, Stirling Range National Park, Fitzgerald River, 
And you've got these gaps which aren't as big as they look, and they're certainly already stepping stones for wildlife to move through. The expensive work is buying farms and replanting them. Um, 17,500 hectares has been secured so far. About a third of that is existing habitat. The rest is being replanted. Um, we've demonstrated you can do it. This is a 100 hectare patch, about four, four and a half years old at that point. It's not revegetation, it is ecosystem restoration. Um, done well. Here's 400 hectares up the road, uh, about 120 species, all done to vegetation communities. It's three years old and you can barely walk through it. It was paddock. We got good data on how the, the, the higher quality your restoration, the better the wildlife like it. And we've got some pretty nice genetic material that says, yep, and you are putting the systems back in place, not just, not just the species, but the whole, the systems, the, the way nature works together. We're also putting some of the community back in place. These are very low population farming areas, which now have a whole plethora of social activities, research, citizen science, repair the tracks, come and, come and look at rest, restoration tourism, we call it. Um, there's more happening down there than just footy on and netball on Saturday now. And in many cases, we've invited the First Nations people back to properties and said, well, there's no gates anymore. What do you want to do? Um, this is one property called Now and Up, where since 2006, about 18,000 people have been through on cross-cultural camps, healing camps, um, student camps, local school camps, and there's now a small ranger team that are part of the restoration program. Even if there seems to be a few totems popping up in the plantings like that 300 metre goanna. Fine by us, it's exciting. In the wet forests, we haven't done a lot, but there has, as I'm sure you're aware, been a wonderful array of people fighting for decades to, to stop logging and, and look after the forest. The first step has been taken. Our government has announced that logging in native forests will, will cease. Woohoo! And now we can move on to the next steps of restoration, the fixing the damage. Very quickly, um, this is a lot more than doing lots of projects. And, and there is, I believe, a thing that Landcare has probably suffered from called Death by a Thousand Projects. Um, but at the same time, we've got to recognise recognize that large landscape change is actually made up of lots of small change working together cohesively. And it's important that our big ambitious dreams don't distract local efforts from doing the stuff they're really good at and want to do. Uh, we provide the support and, and, and try and make it all adds up, add up together more cohesively. And like everyone else, yeah, we can get project money, but achieving multi-year general operating dollars, my God, is, remains a challenge. All these groups involved, people keep saying, is it like herding cats? In my cynical times, I say, yep, and whenever we got a can of cat food, it works really well. So simple reality, there are people and organisations who will be here because they, are, they share the vision and are determined to make it happen. And some are there because they can see the advantage. And if the federal government wants to shovel money at them for corridors, they're about corridors. If the federal government um, wants to throw some money at them for rare species. They're all about rare species. I think the diamonds are, are the ones we like working with most. And, and I would say they're increasingly the local groups who ain't going anywhere, regardless of the national priorities. They're here about their patch. Some dot points on, well, I think I've, I hope I've covered them in what I've said. Um, some educational films, not just educational, but some, some good material for you to dive into on the web. The connections are there. 
we're hoping next year that this group of organisations, Gondwana Link, Great Eastern Rangers and Reconnecting Northland in New Zealand, will be able to hold some forums face to face where anyone who wants to talk with us about large landscape change can can help us learn what we've learned. Um, one last point, this does take a bit of effort. Always remember that. Thank you.